Hey there! So I am working on holiday container today. Super excited about this. I love doing containers. I love doing them all times of year. I love doing winter containers because it just brings so much color to what becomes kind of a bland gray landscape all winter long. I'm starting with the urn in the uh, middle of the garden here. You might notice that I have some styrofoam in here. I like to build into styrofoam if I can because that way you're, you can stick branches kind of straight out of it. Whereas if you're sticking branches into the soil, um, they kind of have to be a little bit upright. Also, because it got so cold here so quickly, most of the soil in my containers froze. So I am able to thaw it out by pouring hot water on it. Um, but this is a good way to make sure, um, makes it a little easier to do that. It also is gonna make sure that it holds this um, sphere, orb, whatever we're gonna call this, upright. So before I go any further, I just wanna say, there is no right or wrong way to especially make holiday containers. You do not need to be gifted in any way, shape or form to do this. You are literally jamming stuff into a pot. You cannot do it wrong. And that is maybe the beauty of this. You are only limited by your own imagination. And I would say if you feel like you're lacking in imagination, go online because there are so many great ideas out there to be inspired by. And speaking of inspiration, I feel like I should mention here that I had this whole thing planned out and a couple weeks ago I was at a, a Christmas open house at a local nursery where I picked this up and I love it. And then two days later I'm on YouTube and I see Laura at Garden Answer making something really similar to what I'm going to be doing here today. And I actually think she used this exact same centerpiece. So um, that wasn't intentional, but I imagine that what happened is, is that probably it was from several years ago or at least a year ago. I'm sure I saw it at some point and thought, oh, that's beautiful. So anyways, um, we're going to give inspiration credit to Laura at Garden Answer for this one. But that's the point, you guys. Just go be inspired by people and do it yourself because, like I said, you cannot screw this up. So what I have to build this with is a couple different kinds of evergreens. I've got some eucalyptus that I picked up at the florist, um, which is not the most economical way to do that, but I didn't need a lot. I got some bittersweet from um, kind of a woodsy area down our road here, and it's totally invasive, so I'm being very careful with it because what I don't wanna do is start growing bittersweet in my garden. And then I have some beautiful dogwood branches, which I didn't bring over here yet, so I have to go get those, so hold on. Okay, so I also have got the six. So I have some beautiful, this is cardinal um, dogwood, cardinal twig dogwood. And this is some um, yellow twig dogwood, which is so bright and beautiful. So I'm gonna use a little bit of that, not all of this in here, and fill this in. So what I need to do first though is put on gardening gloves. Does anybody else have this problem? I get the worst, I wouldn't say it's an allergic reaction, but I'm super sensitive to evergreens. So if I touch evergreens without gloves on, I get like a terrible rash and my I itch my hands practically until they fall off. It's so terrible. So I have to wear, in fact, they're already itching because I was cutting the branches and um, I poked myself through my gloves and they're already itchy. So anyways, um, okay, I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna start with a few of these, a few of these. Okay, we're gonna start with that and see, we can always add more later. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is create kind of a skirt 
of branches around the base of this. Um, so for that, I use whatever sort of flat evergreens I can find. Um, and I don't really have any that grow in this form. We have a lot of, I don't know what they're called, but they're very weeping spruces. So those branches, they, and they have very weak stems on them, so they're very hard to put into pots. So what I do is if I can't find a place to get these from, I go buy a very cheap Christmas tree and I cut it apart. And what I, can, what I did with this one was I picked this one up at the big box store for $15. They were sell, selling bundles of Fraser fir that were probably, they said they were 10 pound bundles. I'd be shocked if they were 10 pounds. Um, for $20. So for less than that, I got a whole tree and I cut the top of the tree off so that I could use that in a different arrangement. So I just cut all the branches off and then I try to get them more or less the same, the same length. And then I'm just going to go around and sort of do one of those on all the way around. Um, also, I reuse this styrofoam from year to year. I glue it together. Uh, hot glue so that I have a piece. I sometimes have to put two together. Um, hot glue it all together. Usually I do two layers of like inch and a maybe two inch thick styrofoam uh, and then I will keep this and use it next year. So I think some of these got a little tall. I'm just going to try to sort of angle them down a little bit more. Um, another thing that I've seen people use to get this effect on a smaller container is a wreath. So you could put a wreath all around the whole thing. I think I'm, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Now I'm going to go through, and this is all cedar that I have this is cedar from the trees actually right behind me. Um, so I'm gonna sort of work this in. This container would be really pretty if it had lights. Unfortunately, uh, the it's very hard to get power to this part of the garden. We actually had an outlet put in for this purpose many years ago, but uh, it doesn't work anymore. And I don't feel like, didn't really seem worth it to just do it just for one pot. I think next I'm gonna use some of this bittersweet that I collected. Now, again, this is a fairly invasive thing that kind of chokes things out, but check out those beautiful berries. I think maybe I'll try to wrap this up. The, we'll see, I don't really know. The berries are a little delicate. I think once, I, if I can get it in there without losing the berries, then we're okay. When I pull this container apart at the end of whenever that happens, often like March or April, I will make sure to not put these bittersweet berries and branches in the compost pile um, because I don't want to take the chance of sprouting bittersweet everywhere so I will just throw those away everything else can go can get composted though
Okay, so you guys, I just remembered that I bought these weatherproof little berry picks when I was at the same open house where I bought this sphere. And I'm wondering if we should put, be putting these in here. So let's give it a try and see what we think. Okay, how does that look? I don't think it does much. I don't think that this brown color, which I quite like, I don't think it does enough. So I'm gonna take it out. I'll use those somewhere else. Okay, so now I want to show you this container that I have sitting over here. A couple of things. I don't particularly like this container. I wanted a tall container in this spot this year to grow some ivy in, and this one was cheap. It, it has kind of this strange, it's not level on top. It's, I don't know if you can see that. It goes at an angle, which is a challenge for many reasons, but I still like having it here. So what I did here was um, I actually found this, this orb. Um, this is years ago, I found this at TJ Maxx and it always is rolling around the garden and I, it, the other day I found it and I quick spray painted it. It was all faded and I just sort of wrapped the ivy around it. Now what I do in this pot is, um, because I don't want to fill this entire pot with soil, what I do is I stick another plastic pot inside of it, but the plastic pot I had inside of it got deformed and kept falling in there and I was losing my mind over that. So I've got this rather ugly black lip. So the whole goal with this is to cover up that lip and just give this a little bit of color, really simple, really easy, really cheap. Okay, so for this one, I actually am gonna start with some of the droopy branches from my trees here. Oh, okay. All right, soil is frozen. Let's fix that. See why an angled pot is so stupid? I feel like there was like an engineering problem there. So I've got this orb pinned in here with a lands with landscape fabric pins, which is what's holding it in there right now. Okay, now I'm gonna tuck some more cedar in there. I sort of like the backside of the cedar because it's that light green color. So I sometimes put it in there upside down so you get to see more of that. I just felt like it was screaming for something in the middle. So I'm gonna just jam a whole bunch of red twigs in there. And because I'm sort of tight with them, what I did was cut them. I don't really want that sticking out though. What I did was I cut them and I'm gonna try to stick the, the tips in the front and the cut parts towards the back just so that you can't really see the cuts but that there um, so you can't really see the cuts but it looks like there's more branches in there this is super handy Okay, so I hope you guys saw how easy this was to stick together. Literally, it's jamming stuff in a pot. Anybody can jam stuff in a pot. Um, I'm cheap, so I didn't want to use up all my branch tips, so I just cut them all in pieces and I tried to turn the cut ends back. Um, but it gives that nice color in the center there. Everything else, you know, it's just stick it in where you can stick it in. I mean, I would say 
give it a shot if you haven't already. Thank you for watching. There will be more holiday containers coming, but I wanted to just get you these two quickly. Um, I hope you liked it. Let me know what you love to put in your containers in winter, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.